You're listening to the Swap Society Podcast, and I'm your host, Nicole Robertson. I interview thought leaders and change makers who are working to create a more sustainable and equitable world through fashion, art, and activism. Join us for a dose of climate optimism as we envision a brighter future. Hey everyone, welcome to the Swap Society podcast. Today, I'm so very excited to be talking with Gary Anderson. He's the designer of the recycling symbol, an architect and an urban planner. Hey Gary, welcome to the show. Hi Nicole, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. It's Uh, great to see you. Yeah, it's nice to be here. Well, I'm talking to you from Baltimore. I've lived here, I don't know, somewhere more than 50 years, I guess, and uh, off and on. And But I was, I'm from a couple of different places, actually. I was born in Honolulu, but I grew up mainly in Southern Nevada, and I went to school in Southern California. The origin story for the recycling symbol. <laughs> Yes, it was the University of Southern California. So let's talk about that for a moment. There was a poster uh, that was um, up in our uh, in the School of Architecture um, that advertised this competition. Uh, it was sponsored by the Container Corporation of America, which um, made a lot of cardboard boxes. So by container, they didn't mean like container ships or container trucks, they meant cardboard boxes. And uh, they had actually done um, some pretty remarkable work hiring um, graphic artists uh, to to do work for them. And they had a, a very good reputation in that area. Uh, this competition was to design a recycling symbol uh, for use on their products that were recyclable or had been recycled. Um, And it was meant to be paper products because that's what they dealt with. Uh, Plastics weren't used nearly as extensively as they are now for packaging. And um, so I saw that and I thought, well, Hmm, this is something I could do. I, you know, it's not going to take uh, a lot of equipment or a lot of money or any assistance. I don't need to be on a team. I could probably do this all by myself. And so I, I did. I came up with uh, several ideas that were all very similar. I submitted them all just to maximize my chances and they selected one of them and and that essentially is the the symbol that you see now i'd love to hear about your inspiration behind your design i mean obviously it's iconic today and everybody sees it everywhere tell us a bit about the inspiration behind the design all right i'd be happy to nicole let me just share my screen (laughs) <laughs> so I this was this is coming from a, a little show that I put together a couple of years ago, uh, but it has all the basic information about just that question. Um, I won't go into all of this. I won't repeat things. But uh, one thing that had just happened and that was on a lot of people's minds, really a lot of people, I think, was uh, this book that Rachel Carson had written a few years earlier called The Silent Spring. And it was, I I think that probably did more than anything else in that period to make people aware of how fragile the environment is and um, how easily man can damage it, mankind can damage it. So um, I had not read this book, but I was very much aware about it and about the basic things that it talked about. So that was that was in my mind on my mind. The other thing is that um, Earth Day uh, was being discussed. Um, The first Earth Day was uh, going to be in uh, 1970. And this is and the uh, the company, the Container Corporation um, uh, wanted to um 
um, merge the uh, announcement of their uh, this new recycling symbol with Earth Day. Um, and so that, again, that was it, all of these things were quite topical. I mean, things like this, I think, would kind of just come and go unnoticed today. But back then, people actually, you know, it was it was news. Um, uh, a cartoonist uh, from the Los Angeles Free Press had designed this ecology symbol. And so uh, everybody was familiar with that. That was for ecology in general. And um, so that was kind of in the back of my mind, definitely. Um, I mentioned that this um, well, printed media, I think, again, was, you have to remember, this was over 50 years ago. So the printed media was much more important then, I think. And the idea of having posters and having things printed on posters was still very important. That's how you know I was made aware of this competition that was being held. It wasn't on TV. It wasn't on social media. It was on a poster that was um, uh, that was hung in the school, and so um, and, and graphics are so important to posters. And um, again, it was kind of this this way of handling information, so that you can get a lot of information across after grabbing somebody's attention. Um, and that was something that we had discussed in school a lot too. How to how best to do that? Um, there were limitations. Uh, there weren't really there wasn't much in the way of computer graphics at the time, so everything was really hand drawn, and and that's what I had to work with. I had tools like the ones that are shown here, and I knew that that was going to. Uh, I mean, I, I was just taken for granted that that's how that's how this symbol would be developed using those technical drawing tools. Um, in the school that I went to at USC, um, at that time, the Bauhaus was like the model for design. Uh, all of the instructors that I had were very familiar with the Bauhaus and the principals um, that were taught there. And some of the uh, staff at the School of Architecture had actually attended the Bauhaus or knew um, had worked with uh, some of the people who had been in the Bauhaus. Uh, Bucky Fuller, Buckminster Fuller, was um, was very active at this point. His his idea of uh, spaceship Earth um, was very was current, um, and people were talking about that. The fact that we've only got one planet and it's a closed system. And we can't go destroying things without rebuilding things and, and expect the, the planet to survive. This was, it seems strange now, but back then it was, it was forward thinking. Uh, at that time, uh, hippie style graphics were um, uh, very important. Again, using posters primarily uh, to advertise events, uh, rock concerts, and so forth. And this guy, Wes Wilson, that you see down in the corner, was um, one of the most active and one of the most sought after graphic artists, I think, for you know the psychedelic uh, style uh, that was used for these um, rock concert posters. Paper. Um, the symbol was meant to be used for recycled or recyclable paper. Um, the thing that uh, that that brought to my mind was a field trip that I took with my class in elementary school to a uh, printing press. And I just remembered being so fascinated by the movement and form of these big rolls of paper which were actually being fed into printing presses, uh, didn't really have anything to do with recycling. But presumably when paper is manufactured, um, some of this type of movement on rollers and uh, would be would be happening also. And so um, 
that was very much foremost in my mind when I when I was thinking about how to how to show the concept of recycling with a graphic symbol. Uh, very specifically, the Woolmark, uh, which had just recently been designed by uh, this graphic artist, um, was one that I admired a great deal. And I, uh, I, I wouldn't say that it uh, that I was copied it that, or that I lifted too much from it, but it was it was something that was in the back of my mind as a symbol that was. Um, abstract in a way but uh, but because of that abstractness it carried a lot of information i thought i mean to me this looks like a skein of wool and um i just i felt that as a symbol that worked very well uh the mobius strip um another thing that i had learned in uh grade school just kind of by happenstance was the um the concept of a mobius strip which was uh first described by uh this mathematician mr mobius uh basically it's a a flat strip of paper that is twisted once and then um and then joined uh and in the by doing this uh, there's only one surface on this object. There aren't two sides like a sheet of paper because the one side is feeds into the next. This little poem was how I found out about it. For some reason, I had gotten my hands on in the school library, I guess, uh, hand um, a book of scientific, scientistic poems. And so this little uh bit of doggerel here. Uh, I just was fascinated by it. For those of you who are listening and not watching the video on YouTube, the poem is Hickory Dockery Dick, the mouse on the Mobius strip. The strip revolved, the mouse dissolved in a chrono-dimensional skip. I didn't know what a Mobius strip was, but I looked it up and I didn't know what a chrono-dimensional skip was and probably didn't figure that out for a while. But just the idea that that there was such a thing um, was fascinating to me. I uh, I used that then uh, because the idea of recycling is something that's continuous, that um, the material may morph from one form to another, uh, but it is, it's always there. It's, uh, you don't really destroy it. it it turns back on itself. And that was uh, that was also on my mind. What is a chrono dimensional skip? Uh, basically, it's, you know, space time. So it's a space time skip, a space time gap. But it doesn't I mean, the poem doesn't really <laughs> mean anything <laughs> at all. It's just kind of like an abstract thought, you know, that because of the, the the strange properties of a Mobius strip, maybe if it moved and if something was on it, it might disappear because there's because of this this fact that there's only one side to it. it somehow it might go into another dimension because it wasn't able to get, or it went to the other side, which doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> but it was <laughs> I just I just was always fascinated by this. And of course, there was a little illustration that went with this that showed a mouse on the strip. So it sounds like there were a lot of different artistic influences that kind of got you going. Uh, how long did it take you? Do you remember how long, how much time did you spend working on your drafts and your designs? I like to, so that I don't, so I don't make it sound too trivial, I probably exaggerate toward a longer period of time than it actually took i'd say a couple of days i'd say the main idea uh i had pretty much before i sat down to my drafting table with those drafting instruments and started drawing it up um I, i'd say the main 
part of it was probably done in an afternoon, but I kept tweaking it and I made different, as I mentioned earlier, I made different um, uh, versions of basically the same symbol. And uh, each one got more and more simplified, more and more abstract, closer and closer to just the line drawing that, that you see now. Um, and that's I I submitted some of the others that had a little more detail, but uh, it was in the end it was the the simplest one that that was chosen. the The symbol had to be recognizable if it was reproduced at a quarter of an inch. Um, that was one of the rules. So of course, the simpler it was, uh, the easier it was to reproduce um, and have it be legible. And it was for a contest, so you did win some money back then. Back then, it was uh, what I won was two thousand dollars. It doesn't seem like very much, I, although I mean, I think um, even now, I think a student would probably be happy to get two thousand dollars for designing something uh, when they were still in school, um, and also two thousand. Um, dollars i mean the, the value of two thousand dollars isn't worth much now but this you know in 19 or in 2023 20, dollars we'd probably be talking about somewhere between seven and ten thousand dollars so it wasn't as trivial as that might seem now so that must have been very exciting i assume at that time you had no idea what the symbol would ultimately become and how <laughs> widespread it would become you are absolutely right. In fact, I just assumed that um, it would come and go, you know, that maybe the company uh, would use it for a while and promote it. But then when the whole kind of environmental, ecological um, uh, idea blew over, then it wouldn't be very useful anymore. And I really did. Th I really did think that uh, this whole idea of environmentalism would, uh, you know, was not going to be something, you know, that that lasted a long time. I thought I thought it was kind of a fad, frankly. Uh, so, um, well, I, I, yeah, I was I was happy to have won the prize. Um, I, I w was happy, but I mean, I wasn't ecstatic. I think, you know, when you're young, you just you just think, well, of course I want it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I, you know, I wouldn't feel the same way now. Of course, I'd feel um, uh, very privileged that uh, uh, that my design was was chosen um, first over over others. And uh, but but then I. Uh, I don't know. I I I I wasn't. Um, I was very happy. I was happy that I got the money. It, it didn't occur to me though that it would be a symbol that would be around for a long time. I, that that probably sounds me makes me sound very arrogant, but it's. But I think when you're younger, you are kind of arrogant. Yeah, <laughs> I just, no, I think that's real. <laughs> uh, hopefully, hopefully I've outgrown that. But back then, that's that's the way it was. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that for a college student, yeah, I mean, that's part of how we get through those years, right? You have to have some kind of right. self-confidence. Yeah, especially in design school where, um, you know, every week practically you've got some kind of critique of your work going on. And so you have to kind of... Um, you have to kind of get in the mood of well, I, you know, it doesn't really matter what they think. I I know it's good, so it's uh, <laughs> they can they can tell me how terrible it is, and it's still what I came up with, and I like it. And you you do, I think, especially I, I don't know what it's like nowadays. Maybe it's different, but back then you really had to kind of um, uh, be in that frame of mind when it came to um, to your work and how you felt about it. Yeah. Well, I think that even just watching, there are so many reality shows out there of different contests for potters and glass blowers and fashion designers and, you know, bakers or whatever. And I think that 
judges often demand that of the contestants, right? It's like they might pick it apart and not like it, but they want to hear the contestant back it up and explain why, you mm -hmm. know, defend their work and explain why they think it's great. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's still true mm -hmm. today. When did the symbol start to be used beyond the Container Corporation's paper products? Do you recall when that started happening? And and when did you become aware of this kind of mass adoption of it? The first couple of years, I very rarely saw it. I saw it on the, uh, obviously, uh, companies out other than the Container Corporation uh, knew of it and did use it. Uh, I remember the statements that I got, the envelopes that contained the statements from my uh, Bank America account um, had the recycling symbol on it and um, reproduced at a quarter of an inch. <laughs> and that's about the, <laughs> that's, uh, that's about really the, the only place that I remembered seeing it for a couple of years at least. It wasn't long after that that I got a job overseas and I, um, uh, so I was away outside of the country uh, for a while. It was in the Middle East and uh, where at the time, again, things were very different um, and and not very developed. And so I, I didn't I didn't see things that would have the recycling symbol on it. And so, you know, I went for several years without seeing it. One thing that I did, though, when I was working over there, um, for summer vacation, I would always come back to the States. By that time, I'd kind of developed a uh, base in Baltimore. And uh, so I'd come back here. But uh, in coming back, I'd stop in Europe, which was kind of a nice uh, perk from that, from working overseas. Um, and on one of those trips, I happened to choose Holland as the place that I wanted to visit and see. And so I was in Amsterdam and I just walking through around that charming city uh, through some of the neighborhoods. And I uh, turned a corner and uh, there in front of me were these three big recycling, like igloo shaped um containers, uh, metal containers that were, you know, they probably were eight feet tall um, and they were like hemispheres uh, with a place to to dump in recycling, one for glass, one for plastic and one for paper, I think. And, um, and that in and of itself didn't really, well, actually that in and of itself did strike me that that Amsterdam would uh that Holland would be so into recycling already that um that obviously they had uh systems developed for um for collecting recycling and 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 taking it to the plants uh that recycle uh but when i turned that corner on those on each of those uh recycling bins the the recycling symbol had been reproduced and it was the size of a beach ball i like to say and uh because of the the tight streets and uh you know the proximity of the buildings i was right on top of it when i turned the corner so this big uh image of the recycling symbol was just right in front of my face that that <laughs> That probably struck me more than uh, when I learned that I had won the competition to know that that it was being used someplace outside of the United States, that it must be taken seriously there. And um, yeah, and, and that was much bigger than a quarter of an inch <laughs> and it still worked. <laughs> so that was sometime in the 70s. Yeah, probably. Uh, mid to late 70s. I imagine that must have been kind of invigorating and exciting, right? To just stumble upon your design in a completely different context than what you had designed mm -hmm. it for. And, and and completely not expecting it either. Mm. Yeah, it, that was uh, 
that made an impression on me. And you went on to become an architect. You were in architecture school when, you know, when you entered the contest. Was there ever a moment when you thought, oh, should I be a graphic designer? <laughs> yeah, sometimes. But I, um, it was never, I was always more interested in architecture. Um, and, uh, you know, graphics can be an important part of the architectural profession, of course, but I was interested in in um, many things in addition to uh, to to graphic design. And um, so I didn't really have the idea that that I had made the wrong decision and that really I should have been a, a graphic artist um, or a graphics designer. Uh, so, uh, but uh, strange as it may seem, I, I've done things <laughs> again that I myself think are uh, important uh, in architecture and, and particularly in planning. Uh, and yet, uh, none of that work has the um, people are not aware of that work nearly as much anywhere nearly as much as the recycling symbol so um so what you i guess what you want to do and what you're interested in and what you enjoy doing is not necessarily what pays the bills or although the recycling symbol didn't pay any bills um <laughs> it's so strange you can really be passionate about something and it and other people don't don't appreciate your uh or at least not consciously uh appreciate maybe what you uh what you're doing mm -hmm. so that 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 is that's enough to keep you humble i i used to i always used to preface um i i would and i still do sometimes i i don't understand why people, when they are recognized for some important achievement, say that I'm really humbled. Why? I mean, it's like if you're defeated, yeah, then you'd be humbled. I think what they're trying to say, I would like to think what they're trying to say is that I'm I'm really um, happy about this. I'm really proud about this. I'm um, I. Uh, I'm 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 glad that that uh, people like what I've done, um, but I would like to be humble in the reception of that um, recognition. So, but that's not the same as being humble. <laughs> to, I, I I I don't know. It's hard for me to explain. Maybe, but I just it, it just it, it kind of makes me wonder when people. Are recognized for something and they say well this really humbles me mm -hmm. yeah so I, i'd like to think i accept things with humility uh but i'm i i don't understand it when people say they're humbled by by an achievement yeah hmm. yeah that's interesting to think about sometimes language evolves so much that people will use a word in a way that isn't what it technically means but it starts to change its meaning or or so on yeah. which i think can also happen with design like the recycling symbol i mean it has been uh some people change it a little bit and make it look different but you <laughs> some people use it in ways that have nothing to do with recycling or you know people sometimes use it as a broader stamp of like this is eco friendly or or whatever you know it's it's really mm -hmm. and I should mention for anyone who's watching or listening that the symbol did become a part of the public domain. I don't recall exactly when that happened, but it did become it, it became so used so much that it just it had to become a part of the public domain because it was just mm -hmm. the, the usage of it was so I, widespread. I'm a little confused about my that myself I wish i could come across um a copy of that original poster because that had of course all the rules about the competition and the rule that i seem to remember 
was that it would automatically be given over to the public domain. Oh. But apparently it wasn't. <laughs> apparently, I, I don't, you know, either I misunderstood or somebody went back on their word, but they, uh, I, I think it was the Container Corporation was actually charging a very, very, very small fee for for using the symbol. And it's amazing that anybody used it under those circumstances. Uh, but that that my understanding is that there was a court case then, mm. um, maybe in the late seventies, mid to late seventies, about um, you know that that since it was used so extensively, uh, it de facto was part of the public domain, and it needed to be recognized as part of the public domain. But there was there was some kind of a class action suit, from what I understand. And um, yeah, I, 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 I wish I knew more about it. <laughs> well, that's okay. And, but it's, it's so interesting. And I think that, I mean, from my perspective, I think, I think that it's, you know, that it's an incredible design. And I think that the design itself, it, it, it was so successful, right? It communicated so much information so quickly, to your point, at all different scales from you know, your bank statement to these giant domes in Holland. And so I think that, you know, that's got to, I mean, if if I had designed that, I would feel really proud about that. So I, I would assume that you have some pride in that. Uh, has it, how has that impacted your life? I mean, it seems from from my memory of the of the story that it was kind of a not a lot of people knew about you specifically right or about the story behind it um and that was kind of something that emerged later was it something you talk about at cocktail parties <laughs> <laughs> I, try, I try not to because there are a lot of interesting things to talk about at cocktail parties and I, <laughs> I i'm really more interested in finding out about other people at cocktail parties but um, I, I think part of the fact, part of the reason was that since I was overseas, um, the uh, connection uh, between me and a, as a person and uh, the designer of the recycling symbol was was kind of lost. I was over there for seven years, I think, off and on, coming back, and um, so. Yeah, that was kind of lost. Um, in fact, somebody else was was taking credit for it. And uh, uh, I came back and just continued with, with my work. I didn't realize what had transpired while I was overseas. I didn't had not heard about the class action suit. I had not heard that somebody else was taking credit for it. I just, you know, I was I was working at a company here in Baltimore, and suddenly uh, one day out of the blue, I got a a telephone call from a nice lady, Penny Jones, in um, in New Jersey, and she worked for the Morris County Recycling Agency um, Department, um, and she had been trying to locate the designer of the recycling symbol and apparently it had, had not been not been easy but then she found me and she somehow got my telephone number and um i guess by that time there was such a thing as linked in but i don't think at the time uh i i had mentioned anything on my linkedin profile about um about designing the recycling symbol but she was able to contact me through linkedin i think that's how she found out mm -hmm. And, um, and and she was she was very excited to have found me, and I mean I didn't realize I was lost, but she was <laughs> she was she was um, she was excited, and she uh, wrote an article in a uh, trade magazine uh, about. Uh, um, you know, the, the, the magazine was about recycling and, mm -hmm. uh, she wrote an article about me and it got in that, in that magazine. And that was really, that was quite a bit later. Um, that may have been in the late eighties or early nineties. And, um, 
and that was when um it it became more generally known that that i designed the symbol mm -hmm. but if it weren't for her i might still just be plugging away well retired uh, <laughs> without anybody knowing um that I that that yes, the designer is alive and well and living in Baltimore. <laughs> well, and we crossed paths, you know, I think it was 2010 uh, for <laughs> a project that I was working on where, you know, you know, I had sought you out as well, uh, which is how we met originally. But um, but it's cool. I mean, I think that ever since I've known you, even I feel like I've seen some magazine articles that have come out and different different interviews. And I just I think it's fun to see from my perspective because it is such an iconic design and symbol and something that's become such a big part of pretty much everyone's life everywhere in the whole world. I mean, everybody knows the symbol, and so. I love seeing the accolades. I think it's cool. <laughs> I, I think I probably over all those years, I think I, I hope, except my, for my little tirade about humble, um, I hope I've become a little bit better about talking about it. I, I was so uh, I was a shy kid to begin with, and I had a hard time uh, hmm knowing really how to talk about the symbol and my relationship to it our <laughs> the symbol and my uh lives kind of went in different directions for a couple of decades um it was we were like a married couple that separated and uh <laughs> and so it had a life of its own and so did i and um it's it's just interesting that uh you know maybe uh 20 or 30 years after the fact uh you know we're, we're more closely related related um the symbol and i now the, um one interesting thing i've found is that yes i you know every once in a while um they'll there'll be something in a newspaper or a magazine or something or somebody will ask uh for an interview <laughs> and uh i i am always very grateful for the opportunity to talk about this anymore and um but one thing that i never experienced until the last couple of years is fan mail who knew i mean somehow uh people usually young people or kids uh find a way to send me a, a letter and and uh they will um, they'll send me uh, a fan letter. Uh, they very often send um, an image of the recycling symbol and ask me to sign it and send it back. And there's always a self-addressed envelope inside, so I don't, have to, <laughs> I don't have to pay anything. But that's really been that's that's heartwarming. I mean, I really I, I think almost more than anything else, I appreciate that when a, a letter um shows up in my in my mailbox it's not like i um you know it's it's not like i'm inundated with it but it happens just often enough um to give me a little boost usually <laughs> that's so fun i i remember you know we became facebook friends you know this was a long time ago but so we're connected and i remember we were chatting about something on facebook and i have a private account uh over there but friends can see friends comments kind of a thing you know or yeah, whatever sure. and and i remember somebody said the gary anderson <laughs> <laughs> and i was like yes that's the gary anderson <laughs> i mean it still seems remarkable to me that somebody would know my know my name even um recycling that, um, nerds environmental nerds <laughs> Yeah, yeah, certainly not everybody knows my name. Although it was on Jeopardy once. Oh, I was going to ask you, have you been on Jeopardy yet? Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I haven't been on Jeopardy. I think I probably would have been. I mean, my 
I have the mind of a 75 year old, which does, doesn't <laughs> recall, doesn't recall things like it used to. So I'm not sure I'd be very good on Jeopardy. I think I may have been at one time, but not now. Um, so yeah, a, a while ago, that was, um, uh, I won't say the answer that was a, on Jeopardy. It has to be a question. That was the question. Uh, uh, my, I think that's the way it worked. My name was the question. Who was Gary Anderson? Was the mm -hmm. was the appropriate response for? Did anybody get it? I think they did. I I didn't happen to be watching it, um, but I. It was uh, they. They have all of those things online. So well, I guess I did go back and watch it um but i don't recall i i think they did i think somebody got it impressive impressive <laughs> i don't have a memory like that i mean i i don't retain stats and facts and names like that i know some people have those brains mine yeah <laughs> even yeah. if i knew something once like if i were on <laughs> jeopardy right. i would probably not recall it in that That's moment right. on that show <laughs> no i know i know that feeling Okay, so, you know, we always like to bring it back to clothing a little bit because, uh, you know, we, we're, we're focused on sustainability in general here on the show, but, but also sustainable fashion in particular. And even if you don't consider yourself a fashion lover, you wear clothes, obviously, we all do. <laughs> uh, do make you choices every morning about what to put on. <laughs> Do you have a favorite piece of clothing in your wardrobe? And if so, what is it? And what do you love about it? I'm wearing it. <laughs> it's, nice. It's, uh, well, actually, both of these things I like a lot. And there's another thing that's close to this, but not exactly it. <laughs> um, so here's the whole scoop. Um, so this is a, a linen jacket. It's from H&M. And I've just grown to love linen. It takes so few chemicals to produce it. It's just basically water and the flax fiber. And um, uh, it, it, it's, it's long lasting, it's light, it's, um, it's fun to wear. It can, the, the flax fiber can be recycled also um, without using, again, without using a lot of chemicals. So, uh, although I'm not aware of any recycled flax that I or linen that I have uh, in my wardrobe, I do enjoy enjoy wearing it. The shirt is a hand-me-down. It's a Tommy Bahama uh, shirt, and uh, I never buy <laughs> Tommy Bahama. But since a friend offered this to me, I I thought sure. I kind of like the 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 color. I've always liked blue. It's got it's got synthetic fiber in it, but it's soft and, and wonderful. And I figure, well, why not? I mean, if I'm wearing it twice, that's better than just throwing it out. And um, it's already been <laughs> manufactured and somebody's already bought it and worn it. So that's probably better than just throwing it away. So, I, yes, I, I it's it's my way of recycling. And then this T-shirt. Um, uh, a while ago, uh, someone contacted me from a company called uh, Everlane, mm. and they recycle um, uh, clothing. And I guess not clothing, but but fabric. And uh, so they sent me. Um, they asked if it would be okay if they produced a T-shirt with that famous image on it mm. of me when I still had hair. Um. And I, I said, sure, it's in the public domain. As far as I'm concerned, all of that stuff is in the public domain because it was in a press release uh, from Container Corporation. And the mm -hmm. press release said for immediate distribution or promulgation or whatever. And mm -hmm. I, I just I took that to mean that anybody could use any of those photos or images that they had in the press release so that that image that you see sometimes is was part of that press release package. So I tell anybody, I, I'm no, no lawyer, but I tell them to sure go ahead and use it. <laughs> uh, and, and so they printed that on, on t-shirts and then they sent me one and this is not it uh, be, because it's, it's uh, well, I, I, uh, my 
I have some nieces and nephews that were uh, very interested in it, and I, I sent them the, the shirts that I received. Uh, but apparently, cotton is not as easy to recycle as linen, uh, but it is it is recyclable. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I knew you were going to ask that question. So I so I just thought, well, rather than talk about it, why not just wear it? <laughs> I love <laughs> that. A it. lot of people do that. <laughs> really good. <laughs> What's inspiring you these days? What's inspiring me? Well, probably not much to do with design. Uh, I just have really gotten into uh, genealogy. And I, it's just so fascinating to me. Uh, and with all of these apps that are available, um, which are not full, foolproof, but they're to me, it, it's just very intriguing and fun to look into where I came from. Uh, I mean, I I have roots from all over, uh, and just learning uh, whatever there is to glean about uh, these ancestors, how they lived, where they came from, uh, has been very fascinating, and I. Um, and so last summer, I I went to Sweden to meet some people that I had actually met. That was some relatives who I had actually met uh, through my genealogical work. And this summer, I'm thinking very seriously, although I haven't bought the tickets yet, uh, to go to um, Denmark and and northern Germany. And uh, I, I don't I don't know. Uh, I'm I'm almost positive there must be some living relatives, fourth or fifth cousins there, but um, I haven't been able to to identify any. But just I, I have been able to identify where these people lived and even some of the houses where they lived. Um, so, uh, yeah, I would just kind of like to go and look that up. I get into that sometimes, too. I, I get in a mood and then I'll dive really deep into family history and and all of that and and i i appreciate that i i i feel the same way <laughs> it's it's fascinating and it's kind of fun yeah and you meet uh, interesting people also it, it turns out that my fourth cousin in stockholm is a theatrical director and um who knew he know he knew um ingmar bergman so it just it's just so fun. fascinating stuff so I know we talked about kind of the birth of the ecology movement in the United States and the original Earth Day and and what things were like back then, which, you know, obviously people talking about how humans are impacting the planet has been going on for a long time. Evidence has come forth that the fossil fuel companies knew what they were doing decades ago, but continued to do it for profit. So. You know, there's been a lot of push and pull in this area, you know, for many decades, uh, which you've, you know, been around to kind of see, see this evolution. But today, I feel like and, and, and I, I know that I have experienced this and a lot of people that I know have experienced this, a bit of climate anxiety, right? This notion that you see all of these scientific reports that are coming out, like the most recent IPCC report that say we aren't making enough changes fast enough. Uh, you know, there are these dire warnings going out there, which impact me. I know that I have my own fair share of climate anxiety here and there. And, and part of what I love to hear from people is, are you experiencing any climate anxiety? And, and what's making you feel hopeful about the future? Yeah, I have to say I am. I wasn't a big recycler <laughs> until um actually it was after uh i was discovered by penny jones that and since she was you know she actually dealt with recycling day in and day out um that kind of made me uh think twice about the way my approach to um waste and and recycling um but yeah, beyond that, yeah, I do have some um, climate anxiety um, and recycling isn't going to be the answer to all of it either. I mean, there's only so much that recycling can do. Uh, but I, 
Um, I'd say what makes me optimistic is just having been around since the 70s and to see how much most people's attitudes have changed about um, uh, sustainability um, and the environment uh, and to know that we have made some really significant strides. Um, like you, I mean, what I'm hearing is telling me that it, it, great as those strides may have been, they're not enough. And, uh, and you know, the rate at which we uh, change our approach to sustainability really has to increase. Um, so I, yeah, it gives me some anxiety, but I think again um and looking forward can be scary but looking backward it can be maybe too comforting but recognizing what has changed from the 1970s to now uh makes me hopeful that we will be able to step up um the 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 pace at, at which we uh uh approach solutions to to climate change um i think you know i mean we talk about 1970s as though nobody even thought about it before then but of course i mean there there have been people who have been seriously concerned uh well before the 70s and i i uh so I think people will continue to be. I, I was completely wrong about environmentalism <laughs> just being a, a passing fad. And so I, you know, just that in itself gives me hope that it wasn't just a, a flash in the pan and that, mm -hmm. that, that that people by and large are responsible and are and, and do are concerned about um the environment and and you know the future of our our planet mm -hmm. um so i don't know if that's enough <laughs> enough to make me feel good about what's happening but it, it it gives me some optimism well and i think that looking back can be a guide for appreciating how much progress we have made i think that that's mm -hmm. absolutely legitimate um, and it, it's a good reminder to say, OK, well, yes, we still have more work to do, but we've also already accomplished a lot. There is much more widespread awareness about sustainability and the need for sustainability and our practices around the world. And so, yeah, hopefully more and more people get on board and we'll be able to, uh, you know, make enough changes that we can at least, you know, keep the planet habitable for for humans, <laughs> that would be nice. It would, would be nice, yeah, it would be nice. It has been such an absolute pleasure chatting with you. If somebody wanted to find you or reach out to you, do you have an Instagram or anything like that? I'm on LinkedIn. Okay. Uh, I don't use it nearly as much as I used to. Well, thank you so much for taking time to talk with us and sharing the history of this iconic symbol that you designed and uh and it's such a pleasure to know you and also just to see your face and catch up a little bit with you and i hope you have a beautiful rest of your day well you too and um i i, I know your son had a little mishap and i hope that he gets better real soon thank you thank you i think he'll be back back to normal in a jiffy <laughs> thanks so much Thank you for listening to the Swap Society podcast. Swap Society is an online clothing swap for women and kids that makes it easy and affordable to mix up your wardrobe sustainably. We're a growing community of women across the USA who are creating positive change by swapping our clothes and slowing down our fashion consumption. We would love to swap with you. If you're interested in joining, you can sign up at our website. Learn more at www.swapsociety.co. That's swapsociety.co. You can find the show notes for each episode on our website. Please get in touch with us on social media too. We're on Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and YouTube for the video version of this podcast at Swap Society. 
Music is by Joel Korlitz and yours truly. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Please help us spread the word by subscribing, leaving a rating and review, sharing on social media, or simply telling a friend. We really appreciate your support. Have a wonderful day. And remember to swap before you shop. <laughs>